Good morning, good morning. Good morning again. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's a great day to be alive. And it's a great day to give God some praise. Amen. Amen. He allowed us to not only wake up, but travel down the dangerous highway safely. And make it here so that we can worship and praise God and give him all that he deserves in this season. Because I don't know about you, but he's been good to me. He's been good to Spring Hill Pope. And we owe God a praise this morning. Amen. Amen. So this morning, the scripture is going to be coming from uh, Revelations chapter 21. Revelations 21. Revelations 21. I... I serve a God, Brittany, that can turn things around. Amen, amen, amen. We serve a God that can turn things around. So here it is, Revelations chapter 21. It says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water, of life freely. This morning we come here to lift up the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The one that can wipe all of your tears away. The one that can give you a new day. So from me to you, let's worship God together. Let's praise God together. Let's give our young adults a hand as they come and give us devotion this morning. Amen. Amen. Come on and clap your hands with me. 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 Sing hallelujah. dance with me come on and do a dance with me come on and do a dance with me come on and do a dance with me sing hallelujah If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not ever every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others let this be in mind you which is which was also in christ jesus Amen. let us pray this morning our father i come to you as humble as i know how asking you lord to guide me lord lord i ask you that you come into the service today lord Give Sister Helen a word that we can take with us for the rest of the week, Lord. Lord, I ask you that you step into my home, Lord. 
Lord, I ask you that you guide my kids, Lord. Guide the ones that's going up and down the dangerous highway. Lord, I ask you that you go along with the bereaved family. Lord, I ask you that you step into the hospital or the jail cell. Lord, even the ones that are sleeping on the street. Lord, I just want to tell you thank you this morning for health and strength, Lord. Lord, I want to thank you for my mom, Lord. Lord, I want to thank you for my church family, Lord. Lord, I just want to say thank you, Lord, because you are the one, Lord. No one but you, God. And, Lord, I just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because it could have been the other way. But, Lord, you saw fit, Lord. And you turned that thing around. But, Lord, I just want to tell you, thank you. Lord, no weapon or form against me shall prosper. Lord, I just ask you, Lord, to guide my feet, Lord, guide my tongue, Lord. Lord, I have said some things that, Lord, only you know. And I know I was wrong. But, Lord, I just want to tell you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. And these many other blessings I pray in your sight and son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. some praise yeah. 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 amen amen give the younger dust a hand that's what I'm talking about mine Emily and T 
All right, so next month, the other three get ready. Get ready. So, but great job. Thank you all for being obedient, for stepping up to the plate to lead us in devotion this morning. But this is, a, again, I say a great day. Uh, we've been running this week, um, but God has given us the, the strength to keep going on, to keep going on. Uh, on Thursday, we went over to uh, Pope School for their art show, and thank uh, Brother James for having the drinks over there. They were appreciative of our donation that we gave, and also for the drinks for them having snacks at the art show, and it was a great time. Miss Mary came over there, too, and we helped them take down stuff, and they were just Blessed that Spring Hill Pope was in the place on Thursday. Amen. Amen. So, so uh, let's let's keep trying to do some work, and uh, and I'm gonna need some more people to start memeing at places, so I won't be drinking Red Bulls for energy. Uh, but but God is good. God is good. God is good. Uh, so today we're going to uh, be blessed by Reverend Winston. But before we get to that point, uh, ladies, let's remember the first Saturday of May, Reverend Winston will be speaking at a women's conference over at Flint Hill in Etta. And if you would like to go, last time I said uh, Brother Matt was going to take y'all, but we got a woman that got her CDL too. And I said, you know what, Brother Matt ain't taking them, you taking them. So you all tell Ron how many people, if you want to go to the women's conference, and Ron taking y'all to the women's conference all right all right so you all make sure you give her a name so that way we have adequate transportation for all of you for all of you uh and that's about it no bible study this week uh little boy say i went to my allergies and sinuses and i'm getting shots and taking antibiotics so i'm gonna slow it down this week and we'll get back on track next week amen amen again next sunday dress down sunday fifth sunday and uh, we look forward to have a hallelujah good time today. Amen. Today, today. So let's, let's, uh, let's free yourself. Let's get some stuff off your hearts, off your minds, so that we can give God his praise this morning. And Spring Hill Pope, I don't want to see visitors this afternoon. I want to see you. Amen. I want to see you. So you all come back here at 2.30, and we're going to give God some some praise this afternoon, amen, amen, for he is good, and he is doing great things, and if we keep him first, there ain't no telling how far the Lord can take us as we continue to work together, amen, amen. So at this time, let's get ready for offering. I'm going to ask Reverend Winston to come now, and then we will move forward. <coughs> Give her a hand as she comes. Good morning, Spring Hill Church family. It's offering time. Yeah, Scripture says God loves a cheerful giver. Yeah. Amen. And I'm according to Luke 6. Well, either way, I'm going to paraphrase. Sometimes we have it in our heart. It just needs to come out. Amen. <laughs> it says when you give, you give unto the Lord. And when you give, Give good measure. Give unto the Lord, let it go into your future, and there will it multiply, and it will return to you. The scripture says, cast your bread upon the waters. After many days, it will return to you, but it will not return to you void without accomplishing its purpose. Give, and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, will men give unto your bosom. God will cause people to give back to you what you've already sown. Sometimes we need doors open, give, and it shall be given to you. And he will open the windows of heaven, not one window, windows, multiple windows. And he will rebuke the devourer so that the canker worm will not eat up your seed that you put in the ground. We need uh, scholarships for going to school. We need doors open for things that we just don't know how it's going to happen, but God. Put your seed in the ground and watch God work for you. Amen? Amen? And it says, test me now. Put me to the test. Test him and see when he shows up. If you have your offering ready, please 
raise it, please. Lord, we just thank you for the ability to give. First of all, we just ask for forgiveness of sin in the name of Jesus. For thoughts, word, or deed, commission, or omission, we repent in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, we present ourselves to you, holy and acceptable, a living sacrifice unto your God. And now we give our resources to you. Your word says 10% of our resources, of our earnings, we give back to you. Tithing is what we're supposed to do. Sowing is what we get to do. And Lord, we present our tithe to you in the name of Jesus. Let it go into our future, and there will it multiply. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Let's follow the directions of the ushers, please. Jesus got his arms all wrapped around me and the world
in the world. Jesus got his arms all wrapped around me and the world. Thank you. For the world. While traveling through this land, Satan is always on my track. He's trying hard to turn me back. But alone, as I'm not alone, as long as you're holding me in your Well, I thank you, thank you, Jesus. Anybody here thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Been so good, you've been so kind. Thank you, Jesus. He woke you up early this morning, started you on, on your way. You could have been dead, sleeping in your grave. But he made old death get back to your head. Anybody here thank you. thank you? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for my children. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for my pastor. Anybody here thank you? Anybody here thank you? Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for my church. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for my hands. Thank you for my feet. Thank you, Jesus. If you don't mind, help me. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You woke me up. Early this morning, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Feel real good. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody here thinking? Anybody here thinking? If you ain't too mean, help me thank you. Thank you for my food. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You better praise my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He worthy. He worthy. Hallelujah. Bless his name.
know what it means?
you, Lord. Let's just reach our hand toward Miss Smith and start praying for her right now in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we just ask that you would just intercede on her behalf right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever she's going through, Lord Jesus, we just pray that you're eradicated right now in the name of Jesus. We pray total and complete healing over her, Lord Jesus. Lord, I just pray healing over her. Send your angels to minister to her spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, go with her now, Lord Jesus. Send your angels to her, oh God. Heal, deliver, set free, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Help her, oh God. It is done. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It is my task this morning to bring a word. There is a word from God this morning. There is a word. I just want to thank Pastor Dion for inviting me to stand here this morning. He could have asked anyone. But he selected me, and I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you guys for accepting me. And I thank my covering in this season in my life, my spouse, my husband, my friend, my prayer partner, my husband, uh, Samuel Winston, for always covering me and always have my back. And I just thank you for that. Women, we all need a covering from time to time. And we need someone to pray over us as we do the ministry that God has called us to do. Amen. The word this morning would be coming from Galatians 6 chapter, verses 9 through 11. So let's still remain in prayer for Ms. Smith. Galatians 6 chapter, verses 9 through 11. If you have it, please stand in honor of the reading of the word. I will be reading from the Amplified Version, and it reads, Let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap if we do not give in. So then, while we, as individual believers, have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, not only being helpful, but also doing that which promotes their spiritual well-being. And especially, be a blessing to those of the household of faith, born-again believers. My topic today is don't grow weary or discouraged. Amen. I just thank you for your service. According to the Bible Dictionary, the definition of goodness is purity, righteousness, a fruit of the Spirit which should characterize followers of Christ according to Galatians 5.22. True goodness come from God, who is holy, righteous, merciful, and loving, according to Psalms 31.19 and Romans 15.14. Then I searched the word weary. What does it mean to become weary? Physically or mentally exhausted, characterized by or causing fatigue, impatient or dissatisfied, to make or become weary. And I did another word search on discouraged, to deprive of confidence, hope, or spirit, making so little progress after so much effort, you become discouraged, to dissuade or deter someone from doing something. Peer pressure dissuades you discourage you from doing what you should be doing, or to try to prevent by expressing dis disapproval or raising objection. So many times we don't do things because of criticism, what people might say by others, and we just stop in our tracks right there and we don't move any further. Some adjectives for discouragements are puffed up, deterred, daunted, dashed, dismayed, pessimistic, dispirited, downcast, disheartened. You are determined not to be too discouraged by criticism from others. And we know criticism all the time, it will make you downhearted, it will make you downcast, it will stop you and have you doubt what God has already told you to do. Here's a further caution given to us 
not to be weary and well doing, according to Galatians 6, 9. As we should not excuse ourselves from any part of our duty, so neither should we grow, grow weary in it. We all have a proneness to do this. We get weary, and we just stop. So we can't get weary in what God has called us to do. We're apt to lose strength and to tire in our duty. Start to fall off from it. Pretty soon you start with all this energy and vigor, and then after a while you get discouraged, you get criticized, you did this wrong, you did that wrong, and you just stop. You just fall off. Sometimes you show up, sometimes you don't. Don't become discouraged. Therefore, Paul would have us to carefully watch and guard against this. He gives us this very good reason for it. Because in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Where he assures us there is a recompense of reward and reserve for all who sincerely apply themselves to well-doing. That is a reward that will certainly come. It will certainly be bestowed on us in the proper season. If not in this world, yet undoubtedly in the next. If we don't grow weary and withdraw from it, we should not only miss the reward that we've already sown. We will miss this too. So all that we've done is for naught because we got discouraged, we fainted, we fell by the wayside, we just stopped. But if we hold on and hold out and well doing, though our reward may be delayed, yet it will surely come. So it would be an abundance recompense. We can't just stop. We just have to hang in there. We get discouraged, but we just have to hang in there. And take note here that perseverance and well-doing is our wisdom and interest as well as our duty. For through this is the reward promise. God promises many rewards in the scripture, but there are sometimes conditions applied to it. And according to the IBP New Testament comp commentary, chapter 6 of Galatians, verses 9 through 10, is titled, Doing Good. Amen. Growth in our relationship does not happen automatically. Growth takes effort. Hard work is required in broken relationships, if broken relationships are to be rebuilt. If these two verses Paul simply encouraged Christians to keep on working at building their relationships. Let us not become weary in doing good, according to verse 9. Although he warned against relying on the works of the law as the basis for our blessings, he clearly taught that true faith expressed itself through love and in hard work of serving others or another and caring for each other's burdens. We have to do this. It's not an option. I know relationship is hard. I've been through a divorce. And I just say, you know what, forget it. It's just too hard. You get tired of doing the same thing, saying the same thing over and over and over and over again that you just say, forget it. And you just walk away. But we just have to persevere and well-doing. We just have to persevere and what we are supposed to do and get the reward that God has promised us. One of the greatest obstacles to rebuilding broken relationships is simply fatigue. We get tired and we just stop. Many times I don't say that I'm tired because I think tired is spiritual, but I say I'm exhausted, which means if I get a little bit of rest, I can get up and fight another day. So as we become fatigued, don't get there, just step back, go to God in prayer, go down on your knees, says, Lord, I need a refreshing today. I need a new spirit today, Lord Jesus. I'm exhausted. I can't do it anymore. I need to be fresh, and I need your Holy Spirit to guide me. Caregiving is exhausting. Relationships are exhausting. You want to throw in your spiritual towel and say, forget it. I can't do this anymore. That's the easy way out. We have to persevere. It's okay, God, let me just step back. Let me regroup myself here. 
let me get in your word and say what your word says, the promises. It says, in a little while, if we don't faint, we will reap the reward that God has promised us. So let us not grow weary and well-doing. And it's not just doing just to get. It's not just doing good just so what I can get out of this. We are to do it because of love. And it says charity. We are to do this. Even Paul sounds discouraged when he's talking about his effort to rebuild relationship with the Galatians. And he says, I fear for you that somehow I have wasted my efforts on you. You ever feel like you wasted your efforts on some people or some things? You just feel like all this I've done is for nothing. It's all feel wasted, but no, do not neglect the experience that you gained in doing all of this, okay? Amen. So just keep praying. Keep praying. And Paul recognized that fatigue and discouragement might cause Christians to throw in the spiritual towel and just quit. Just give up and quit. So he represents two incentives to keep us from giving up when we grow weary and serving others in love. First, he assures us of a reward for doing good. At the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Perseverance. Sometimes the harvest is experienced in this life. When we sow acts of love, we reap a harvest of love in return. When we give generously and sacrificially to the needs of others, we reap a harvest of gratitude as those needs are met. When we sow seeds of God's word and needy lives, we experience the joy of response. But we must remember that reaping a harvest almost never happened the same day you sow it. So don't expect God to give back to you the promises the same day that you sowed that seed. The farmers are just now plowing up their ground, getting ready to plant. And as they plow it up and get the ground ready, they will plant that seed. But it will not come out until later on in the year. Nevertheless, we must never give up because we know that the proper time our master will return and reward those who have been faithful servants. Remember, he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over few things. I'll make you ruler over much. Amen? After his first, he says, he assures us of a reward for doing good at the proper time. The second is Paul motivates perseverance and service to one another but reminding us that we are part of a great family. It's not about us. We're part of something bigger than we are. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the faith of believers. Although there are no limits placed on the scope of our service to all people, our priority should mainly be for believers. Here Paul picks up a central theme in his letter. And the central theme is all believers are children of Abraham by faith in Christ, the seed of Abraham. Are we the seed of Abraham? All believers enjoy the full rights of the children of God. Are we the children of God? All believers are true children of the free woman, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother. Are we free in the spirit? These great truths about family of believers should motivate us to keep doing good to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We belong to one another's family since we belong to Christ. Remember when people come up to join the church, welcome to the family. In the morning I say, good morning, Spring Hill Pope family. Amen? Here is an exaltation to all Christians to, good, to do good and their places according to Galatians 6.10. As we have, therefore, an opportunity, it is not enough that we do good to others if we would approve ourselves to be Christians indeed. The duty here recommend to us 
is the same that is spoken according to Galatians 6, 1 through 10, that the apostle exalt us to sincerely and perseverance in it. So here he directs us both the object and the rule of it. The object of this duty, or more generally, all men, we are to do good to everybody. It doesn't matter red, green, black, blue, whatever, everybody. We cannot discriminate or show prejudice to anybody. Do good to everybody. And we cannot narrow our bounds. I'm just going to bless us for and no more. That's just your family. You could do good to everybody. Because what happened? The reward is coming. You don't want to be like the Jews and the Jezusiahs, Jezusiah and Christians were apt to do, but should be ready to extend to all who partake in the same common nature with us. As far as we are capable, they stand in need of us. But in the existence of doing good, we are to have a special regard for the household of faith or to those who profess the same common faith and are members of the same body of Christ with us. Though others are not to be excluded, yet these are to be preferred. The charity of Christians should be extensive Christ, uh, charity, but yet the end, a particular respect, is to be to good people. You have to be good to people, as God is good to us. He's good to us every day. It doesn't cost us anything, just so, just be good. Show random acts of kindness. And the rule in which we observe in doing good to others is that we have an opportunity. I remember I was working downtown Pittsburgh and I would pass this perceived homeless person on the street every day. Going to lunch, I'd pass him. And he would speak to me every time. And I would pass him up and the Holy Spirit convicted me, said, you don't know what this person has gone through or is going through. I have given you provisions to help this person. I looked for this man two days, three or four days. He showed up again on the street, and I had an opportunity to bless him. God will give you opportunities to bless people. Do not pass up that opportunity. Do not think it's small that, well, I, they don't, you don't know what someone is going through. They may be dressed to the nine, looking like they just stepped out of Saks Fifth Avenue but you don't know the brokenness that they're going through in their heart and mind. They might just need a prayer. You just don't know. They might look it, but you don't know what's going on on the inside. And God could be using you to bless this person, to give you a bigger and better blessing than you think you have. It might not, you might not get your return in this lifetime. Remember I said it goes into your future. It might be handed down to your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. Do not neglect being good because it is going into your future. You are sowing seeds for your future. I am standing here because of the seed my father, my mother, my grandfather, my great-aunt had sowed for us years ago. They didn't ask us if, if we were going to the Sardis District Association. He would say, you go and get ready. They taught us. And we are reaping the benefits. I'm standing here because of prayers of our forefathers and our foremothers, great-grands, great-grandfather. Because of who and what they were, we are reaping the harvest, the benefits. We have to do that for our children, our nieces and nephews, our grandchildren. We can't just keep it all. We have to share it. God has given us resources and opportunities to share it. And we can not only do that. It says, according to Ecclesiastes 11.2, it says, divide your portion to seven or even eight, for you do not know what misfortune may occur in the earth. You have to have multiple, so in multiple streams. So when it comes back, you're not going to know which stream it came from, but it's coming. As God has made it our duty to do good to others, he makes it a providence for us to furnish opportunities. It says the poor we'll have with us always, according to Matthew 26, 11. 
I remember our bishop in Pittsburgh said he was in a service with his brother, and they said, give a dollar for the poor. Our bishop said he gave out 20. And his brother says, they said a dollar. He says, the poor we'd have with us always, but I, we shouldn't have the same poor. He says, I don't want the poor with me always, so I'm giving above and beyond. As God give you the opportunity, we have poor with us, but it shouldn't be the same poor. We should have opportunities to bless others and others and more and more. Amen? When he gives us the opportunity to be useful to others, he expects we should improve in it according to our capacity and ability. You might not have funds, but you have skills. You have skills that you can share with someone. What skills do you have that you can bless someone with? We have need of godly wisdom and discernment and direct us in exercising our charity and particularly in the choices to the proper object of it. We have to have discernment. And we cannot think, well, they don't need it and I saw them do this. We have to get that out of our mind. Let God deal with that. God told you to do, and we have to do. Just as we're doing in the neighborhood, in the community, random acts of kindness. As we have opportunity and God is giving us resources, we are doing. We are blessing. We are sowing seeds into our future. Amen? As we were sitting in one of the services one evening, at the state conference. After the pastor had finished preaching, he did an altar call for pastors and ministers that had become discouraged and that had become very weary that they were ready to throw in the towel and just quit. Church folks can get messy. Religious folks can be discouraging, can be downhearted and downright mean but we cannot become discouraged. He prayed that God would strengthen them in their ministry and they, they would persevere in their calling that God has placed on them. Whatever calling you have on your life, you have to persevere in it. You have to be strengthened. You have to be encouraged. Sometimes just an encouraging word to someone will help them. Show random acts of kindness, doing something for someone without expecting anything in return. It could be the smallest little thing. Be the first to hold up the door open for someone and don't expect them to say thank you rather than somebody holding the door and you the first one to rush in about ready to push everybody over. Just hold the door. Give that card from the dollar store, two for a dollar that says thank you, I appreciate you, a little bit of an encouragement Give that flower from your garden, that tulip or rose or whatever says, I was thinking about you today when I picked this flower. It doesn't take a lot, but God is mindful of the small things. I remember giving a card to one of my customers when I found out that his wife had cancer. Just a small little card said that I'm praying for you. But he thought it was the biggest thing and how it uplifted his wife's spirit just that someone have never even met her, thought enough of her to send her a card. According to 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, in the Amplified Bible, it says, For it is the will of God that by doing right you may silence, muzzle, or gag the culpable ignorance and irresponsible criticism of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover or pretext for evil, but use it and live as bond servants to God. Show respect for all people. Treat them honorably. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God. Honor the king. To Pastor Dion and Lady Alexis, don't grow weary. Don't get discouraged as you follow God's plan for your life in this church. Because as I say, religious folks can and will exhaust you. Do not forfeit what God has already placed in your hand. 
Do not allow religious folks to exhaust and discourage you. Because in God's word, according to Jeremiah 29, 11, 13, and the voice, it says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the eternal, plans for peace, not evil, to give you a future and hope. Never forget that. At that time, you will call out for me, and I will hear. You will pray, and I will listen. You will look for me intently. You will find me. Remember, doing good. Don't grow weary in well-doing. There is a harvest if you don't faint. Persevere in doing good toward others. Seek and recognize opportunities to show love. Except for God giving us discernment and how to operate in this, we're going to get weary. We're going to get tired. We're going to get exhausted. We just want to sit down or somewhere and stay in bed and cover our heads and says, I'll see you tomorrow. God did not call us for that. He says, persevere. Don't faint. Don't get discouraged. He will give you the desires of your heart. He has a future for you here and a hope. You have to persevere. And it was all because the man named Jesus died on the cross for us. That he stayed in the grave three long nights. But he got up early on Sunday morning with all power in his hand, power over sin and shame. And by his stripes we're healed. We continue being healed from our bondage, from our sin, from our shame. He's constantly healing us of stuff people have put on us. He's healing us from our discouragement, our disappointments. He's constantly healing us from past shame, past relationships. He's healing us as a church, as a whole. He's healing Spring Hill Pope Church in the name of Jesus. Amen. But when he got up, he got up with all power in his hand, giving us direct access to the Father. So when it gets to be too much, I can fall on my knees and say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need your refreshing power. Jesus, I can't take another step without you. Jesus, refresh me, restore me, God, so I can get up and fight another day. But it's all because of Jesus. We have what we have. Remember, don't grow weary. Don't get discouraged. Criticism and well-doing, because in a little while, you will reap. If you faint not. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Let's give Reverend Winston another hand. Shall we pray? Father God, Lord, we thank you for grace. We thank you for mercy. But Father, right now we come asking that you touch right now in the name of Jesus. Touch her and give her the strength that she needs to be healed with whatever that's going on in her life. Lord, guide the doctors as they are still in the parking lot trying to figure out what's wrong. Lord, give them discernment to, to diagnose her correctly. And Lord, give them the strength and the direction to give her the medicine that she needs to come back to herself. Amen. Lord, we need you now. And it's not only her, but we need you in here this morning. Lord, touch the family members, touch the youth. Touch Reverend Winston to give her the strength to keep on preaching in spite of it all. Because, Lord, we know that you are God who sits high and who looks low. So, Lord, give the family strength to give her strength as they just try to figure this out. And Lord, we tell you thank you right now. Thank you in advance for what you are doing right now. 
And Lord, we praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We lift you up. Lord, we give you honor. We give you glory in Jesus. In Jesus' name. Father, we have others dealing with illnesses that you know about, but we don't know about. Lord, we ask that you touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody has been growing discouraged. Lord, touch right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we need you now. Give us peace now. Give us comfort now. Give us joy right now that only you can give us. In Jesus' name. We pray amen, amen, and amen. Uh, our Father's house is now open. You can come by letter, Christian experience, candidate for baptism. Maybe you want to rededicate your life. Today will be a great day to get your house in order. Maybe you want to become a member of Spring Hill Pope. Today will be a great day for you to become a member here at Spring Hill Pope. Don't grow weary or discouraged. It'll be a great day while we have blood running through our veins. You ought to come now. You ought to come. You ought to come. You ought to come. We, we see that there is room, but there is none. There is none. Let's give... God, some praise for Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Let's also give a hand to our health team that has been working this morning. Let's give them a hand. Everybody that has been involved. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank everybody for trying to stay attentive uh, to service and for not growing distracted and Blessings to you to keep going on with the word of God, the sheriff. Let's give her a hand again. Let's give her a hand. The sheriff department, he was here. He said, man, this is amazing. She's still preaching the word of God. He said, man, I would have been distracted. I would have stopped. But thank God that she was able to keep giving us the word of God. Amen, amen, amen. So uh, we thank God for her, and we're praying for them and praying for you. And uh, today we just ask that you come back at 2.30 so we can have a hallelujah good time. Amen, amen, a hallelujah good time. Uh, again, no nothing this Wednesday. We will still have the prayer call. Uh, we're not even doing online Bible study this week. Uh, just a prayer call this week. Uh, youth, let's get ready to sing next Sunday. So we'll try to rehearse on Saturday and uh, go from there. Our minds and hearts are clear. Miss Freddie, anything? You good, good, all right. Everybody, please stand. Everybody, please stand. Bruderes, you'll be here this afternoon? Think so? Okay, okay. I want to put you on parking lot duty if you don't mind. All right, all right, my man, my man. So shall we pray? Father God, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your son, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for this, your presence here at Spring Hill Pope. And Lord, we thank you for a year. Lord God, for being here with your people down in Pope, Mississippi. And Lord, we're just asking that you continue to heal everybody that's here, physically and spiritually. In Jesus' name, Lord, help us to make it back here safely this afternoon so we can give you the utmost praise that you deserve for allowing us to make it here one year together, working together, building relationships, doing things that we have not seen before. Lord, we tell you, thank you for all that you are doing. And Lord, we're just praying that you, you continue to guide us and lead us and open up our hearts and minds to receive whatever it is that you would have us to do in this season. And Lord God, we tell you thank you right now in Jesus' name.